Good morning, one and all. Happy Tuesday. It is 6.21 a.m. I am still getting ready for work. Um, totally funny morning so far. I um, could not find my glasses right on my dress so where I left them. Oh, my mom left them. I had a, another early night last night. Yesterday afternoon. I've been going to bed so early. But it's okay. It's okay. I hope you are well. I hope you are well rested. I hope you had your water. I did not have my water as yet, but I will as soon as I'm... I got to take my water out of freeze to bring with me to work. Other than that, I'm good. Um, I was really, really, really excited about um going further into my hospital stay. Um, I shouldn't say it was a visit because it, it was a visit, but I was admitted in the hospital. So let's let me correctly um let me correctly state what the fact is. I was admitted in the hospital. And um seems like I'm just getting right into it. <laughs> because this is something that I had to look into differently. I had to be honest about what was going on because, again, I felt like I was in a wonderland. And it's, I don't know if these people watch my videos or know, or if my color scheme, you know, me wearing maroon and my wearing purple and what black means to me and so on and so forth. My whole number things, you know, how three is a very important number to me being a it is one of my favorite numbers it is my favorite number three and um so many things goes into the number three all of that was there and i came to the realization that yesterday i was thinking about like i was losing my mind I was losing my mind because the so-called cookie cutter way of doing things or seeing things or being or all that stuff, especially as a, 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 a as a black woman, it all seemed to take over me. All of it. And I was calm and I was collected, but I couldn't explain to the doctors that because I told them about the car accident. I told them about the, you know, I don't think I got into the seizures, but they have my medical records. All they were more focused on were on my medical records, not necessarily who I was. And... There was a lot of a lot that was misconstrued because they accused me of talking to myself when when I was talking out loud, I was just telling the workers what I was laughing about, you know, whatever was on my mind, whatever I found funny at that time. Because even that, like I said, I would always think of gray. You know, I said I wear gray, excuse me. I'll say that I wear gray, but I thought of gray a lot. You know, I had my, my mom, she brought me a Batman sweater and, you know, when I'm in the, <laughs> when I'm in the valley, <laughs> I like to have my Batman sweater on, you know, just, that's my shield. It's just, it's, it's a shield. It's just, it is what it is. I love my Batman shirts. I love my Batman shirts. I don't care. <laughs> when I'm nervous, I wear them. <laughs> so... For my mom to bring me my Batman hoodie, hood sweater, sorry. Perfect. Um, she brought me books and I was looking at words. And some words I remember, some I don't, some I want to get back into. And I think I needed to... I have to see myself through other people's eyes. So... I got a lot of apologies because the lady hit me there and, you know, I was ready to hit her with the phone. She apologized and um, there was a gentleman there that, calm and collective, I don't know who he scared. 
but he was just calm and collective. Like, why are you there? You know, I didn't rile up too much until they were telling me they want to keep me for more observation because according to them, I was talking to myself. Now, I'll tell you what I did. Whatever thing I was laughing about, whatever memory, whatever thought, I said it out loud for them to hear what I was laughing about instead of them thinking I'm just laughing to myself. But I don't know who was listening because it seemed like no one was listening. And the workers there, very helpful. Very helpful. And I'm not talking about the psychiatrists or the social worker per se. I'm talking about those that are working with us. Because I was coming collective. But there's no telling how the other people were being, you know. A fight broke out, which always happens the day that I leave the hospital. A fight breaks out. The day that I'm going to leave. Before I leave. And it was only because of one man trying to protect me and another female from a newcomer. That was it. That was it. I... I go there to reflect. I did the park thing, but I had to be honest with myself and ask myself, am I okay? I think it's really good to finally feel more comfortable about my diagnosis as being schizoaffective, more leaning towards bipolar. It explains, sadly, that my highs are too high. But I don't have to take it that way. You know? My highs being too high, I don't know. I don't know, like looking at it as an illness. This morning's meditation was different. I'm starting to breathe comfortably again. I'm starting to trust the world around me. I allow myself to love, to really be a part of life instead of being a part of the life that may have flashed before my eyes. I don't know. Just everything is in a dreamlike state. It was. It was. Like I've seen it all before. All the people, they look familiar. And the music, oh my gosh. I have a wine to a Jamaican song in years. <laughs> in years. And I danced my ass off when the Jamaican music came on. And it was just me by myself. And they were just playing it for us, you know. Playing it for themselves, playing it for us. Well, they asked us what we want to listen to. And, you know, there was a lot of Bob Marley. And, you know, Bob Marley is everything. Every Little Thing is Going to Be Alright is my favorite Bob Marley song. Excuse me, I'm growling today. <laughs> Excuse me. <sighs> but yeah, um, I don't know what's going to happen, but I feel like today is going to be a very, very, very good day. So I'm going to leave you with that thought. And thank you for watching. And as always, in the corner of my mouth, you know, I love you. Okay? Stay safe.